We humans seem to have a bizarre curiosity with murders, but there is always some satisfaction when the killer or killers are given the justice they deserve. But then there are those cases where the perpetrator leaves without a trace and is never found. Here we have five of the darkest unsolved murders in history. Be sure to stay for the end, but warning, there will be some very graphic content. Let's first start with a brutal and bizarre killing, the Keddy murders. Reports of a quadruple murder that took place in a cabin in Keddy, a former railroad town in the foothills of Northern California's Sierra Nevada mountains, was the most vicious attack in Plumas County history. The cabins at Keddy were originally built for those traveling through the area, but they were eventually rented out for long-term contracts. The community was pretty tight-knitted, everyone looked after each other's children, and doors were always left unlocked as there seemed to be no reason to lock them, but in 1981 all that changed. On April the 11th, 1981, Glenna Sue Sharp, a 36-year-old mother of five, was at her cabin home with her sons Ricky, age 10, Greg, age 5, and her 12-year-old daughter Tina. Justin, a family friend, was also at the home, and Sue's other daughter, Sheila, was staying just a few feet away at a neighbor's house. Her oldest son, Johnny, and his friend, Dana, were in the nearby town, and everything seemed to be a normal night for the Sharp family. Little did they know, four of them would be brutally murdered by the morning. After returning home from town, Johnny and Dana were horrifically murdered alongside Johnny's mother, Sue. And when Sheila Sharp returned home the next morning, she opened the front door and found the gruesome sight of her mother's dead body lying under a blanket. She also saw the lifeless bodies of Johnny and Dana and a steak knife that was used to kill the victims was laying next to them. To give an example of how vicious the stabbings were, the steak knife blade had been bent backwards about 25 degrees. When police arrived, the cabin was a gruesome sight. There were stab marks in the walls, a large quantity of blood on the living room floor, and 12-year-old Tina Sharp was nowhere to be seen. After the autopsy, reports showed all three victims were tied at the hands and feet with tape and electrical cord, with Sue's bindings being especially tight. The autopsy also concluded that Sue and Johnny were bludgeoned with a hammer and repeatedly stabbed. Dana was for some reason spared from being bludgeoned and was strangled to death and also stabbed. After finding blood on 12-year-old Tina's bedsheet and a bloody fingerprint on a wooden post outside, it was obvious she had been kidnapped. Four years after the killings, Tina's skull was found in Feather Falls Camp, which is about 29 miles from Keddy. The exact cause of Tina's death is unknown. The strange thing is that Justin, Ricky and Greg, who were in the cabin, claimed to have slept through the ordeal. And although family friend Justin's statements have been inconsistent throughout the years, people believe he was just so shook by the event he didn't know what to say or think. But the strange thing is that police did believe Justin touched at least one of the bodies because there was blood on the outside doorknob of the room he was staying in. And also, due to the savageness of the attacks, it was believed they were personal, with the killer being a possible friend of the Sharp family. One theory is that Johnny and Dana hitchhiked home from the nearby town and the hitchhiker entered the house and killed them, and many believe Justin had something to do with it. No arrests have been made in connection with the murders, and several cabins, including the scene of the murders, Cabin 28, was demolished in 2004. The Umbrella Killing Next is the mysterious killing of Georgi Markov, who was killed in broad daylight during rush hour in central London. Born in Sofia, Bulgaria in 1929, Georgi Markov was a chemical engineer and technical school teacher, but he had a passion for writing, mainly novels and TV scripts, and eventually worked as a broadcaster and journalist for the Bulgarian section of the BBC World Service. Markov's murder was very unique in the fact he was killed by what seemed to be a mysterious assassin who used a gadget that was like something out of a spy movie. On the 7th of September 1978, Georgi was on his way to work at the BBC. It was a busy morning and he was waiting at a bus stop on Waterloo Bridge. He felt a sharp pain in the back of his right thigh and said it felt like nothing more than an insect bite. But then Georgie spotted a heavyset man picking up an umbrella from the ground. The man mumbled I'm sorry in a foreign accent before hurrying across the busy road, jumping in a taxi and driving away. Georgie of course didn't think much of it at the time, but when he arrived at work he noticed there was a painful red bump on the back of his leg in the same spot where he felt the sharp pain earlier that morning. He began to feel ill and after getting progressively worse, he was sent to hospital and died four days later on the 11th of September 1978. His cause of death was poisoning. The sharp pain he felt whilst on Waterloo Bridge was a tiny pinhead sized pellet containing holes drilled at right angles to form an X shape inside. It had been filled with 0.2 milligrams of ricin, which is a deadly poison. The pellet was covered with a waxy coating that ingeniously was designed to melt at 37 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature as the human body, meaning shortly after the pellet would penetrate the skin, the wax would melt and the toxic poison would be released. To this very day, who exactly killed Georgi Markov is a mystery. Nobody has ever been charged, but the most believed theory is that he was assassinated by the Bulgarian intelligence. 
This is believed because the Bulgarian officials did not agree with a lot of his books. So much so, they withdrew all of his work from libraries and bookshops, and the fact that Vladimir Todorov, a former Bulgarian intelligence chief, was sentenced to 16 months in prison for destroying several documents relating to Markov's death, and also the fact that two individuals suspected of being involved in his murder mysteriously died in the 90s. Maybe the two suspects were killed to prevent spilling information. It seems we will never know for sure, and who exactly the heavyset man who fired that fatal pellet will continue to remain a mystery. The Death of Gareth Williams The death of Gareth Williams is a strange one. The 31-year-old mathematician and secret intelligence service worker was found padlocked in a bag in the bath of his London flat on August the 23rd, 2010. At first, his death was said to be unnatural and possibly unlawful, but shortly after, it was reinvestigated and concluded that Williams' death was probably just an accident. It was believed Gareth had a fetish for being tied up and that he attempted to get into the bag as some sort of fetish or that maybe he was practicing escapology. Then, after becoming trapped, he suffocated inside the bag and died. Now, this is pretty much what the current status of his death is, that it was an accident, but numerous researches have been done to prove there is absolutely no way Gareth could have locked himself inside the bag. Peter Folding, an expert in rescuing people from confined spaces, tried 300 times to lock himself in a similar bag and said it would have been impossible for Gareth to get into the bag and padlock it from the outside. Even Harry Houdini wouldn't have managed it, he said. If Gareth locked the bag himself, there would also surely be DNA prints on the bath, the padlock and the zipper, but there were none. The shower screen was also closed, making the area in the bath a lot smaller. The bathroom door was also shut and the lights were off, meaning if Gareth did get himself in the bag, he did it in total darkness. There was no sign that Gareth struggled to get out of the bag, and although it was in the middle of the summer, the heating in the flat was turned up full, meaning decomposition would be fast and forensic clues would be lost. Mr. Williams's iPhone was also found wiped and the doors and locks had been removed from the flat by the time police experts arrived. So if it wasn't accidental, how did he end up in the bag? The most believed theory is that he was assassinated by Russian agents due to the fact of Gareth's involvement with the GCHQ and the British Intelligence Service. Gareth was last seen by CCTV cameras shopping around central London from the 11th to the 15th of August, with the final image capturing him entering Alderney Street where he lived. To this day, if you type in Gareth Williams' cause of death, it will say accidental, despite an enormous amount of evidence against that. So the exact circumstances surrounding Gareth's death will always remain a mystery. The Boston Strangler Between 1962 and 1964, 13 women ranging in age from 19 to 85 were murdered in the Boston area in America. Dubbed the Mad Strangler of Boston, it was one of the biggest news headlines of the time. All the victims were strangled with silk stockings, or their own bras, and most were sexually assaulted. There was never any sign of forced entry into the victims' homes, so it's believed the women must have let their murderer in, either because they knew him or because they believed him to be a sort of maintenance man or serviceman. In October 1964, a man who entered a woman's home posing as a detective was arrested for raping a woman. After his arrest, Albert DeSalvo confessed in detail to the killings of all the recent murders and was convicted. But, not all of DeSalvo's descriptions of the killings were accurate. Most, if not all, the details were wrong. He said he sexually assaulted all the women, but investigations show that not all the women were sexually assaulted. DeSalvo was sentenced to life in prison a year later for other unrelated crimes, and in February that year, he escaped from Bridgewater State Hospital with two inmates. This opened a full-scale manhunt, and he gave himself up the next day. Following the escape, he was transferred to a maximum security prison, where six years later, he was stabbed to death in the infirmary, the man who attacked him was never identified, which is a mystery in itself. Now, although he confessed to the murders, like I said, his details were not accurate and several of the victims who survived the Boston Strangler did not believe it was DeSalvo. DeSalvo was also mentally ill and the medical director of Bridgewater State Hospital insisted that DeSalvo was not the Boston Strangler, calling him a very clever, very smooth, compulsive confessor who desperately wanted to be recognized. But in 2013, it's believed the Boston Police Department released information stating that they had discovered DNA evidence linking DeSalvo to the murder of Mary Sullivan, but DNA for the other murders he claimed to have committed was never found. It's a confusing case, and FBI agent John E. Douglas, who was investigating the murder, said the same as the medical director of Bridgewater State Hospital, that based on DeSalvo's background and information given, it's unlikely he committed the murders, and believes he just wanted to claim credit for them. 
and with the inconsistencies of his confession, inaccurate times of death, method of strangulation, and so many other things he got wrong. To this day, we will never know whether Albert de Salvo actually committed all the crimes. Maybe he just took part in one of them, and that was the cause of his DNA sample being found. But as for the other murders, they continue to be unsolved. I wasn't lying when I said the last case was going to be graphic. Most of you are probably thinking it's the infamous case of Jack the Ripper, but the Ripper story merits a whole video by itself. This next case though, is easily one of the most mysterious and brutal murders in American history. It's the murder of Beth Short, dubbed the Black Dahlia by the media during the time of her death. Elizabeth Short was born on July the 29th, 1924 in Hyde Park, Massachusetts. She was an aspiring actress who grew up quickly and looked older than others her age. She began traveling around, staying with friends and family and bouncing from job to job, but eventually moved to Hollywood to follow her dream of becoming an actress. Sometime in January 1947, Beth was staying at the Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles and was supposed to meet up with a man in the night, but after last seen leaving the hotel, she was never seen again. Her body was found on the 15th of January by a passerby in a vacant lot near Hollywood in a horrific condition. Beth's body was cut in half, was bruised and beaten and also showed signs of sexual assault. There were also rumors that she had a mysterious red dye in her hair and the letters BD carved into her body, but this has not been verified. Beth was just 22 years old when she was murdered, and although it's said she was attacked with a butcher's knife, many argue that great precision was used which required a saw or some sort of medical instrument. It's believed she was held up by ropes whilst being severed in two, and could well have been alive but most certainly would have been unconscious. Her body was also washed clean and her blood was drained. This strongly suggests she was killed in someone's home or something similar. She was then taken and left at the Krenzhor district a few miles from the hotel she was staying at. Upon release of the murder, it made front headlines in the local paper for months, during which several men and women were questioned, but police could not validate anyone's story. There were also several false confessions, and the only possible clue to the murder is that it's believed there was a black car parked near the area where Beth was found in the early hours of the morning, but apart from that, there is not much else to work from. It's been said that the more you learn about Elizabeth Short's case, the less you know, and today, the Black Dahlia murder remains one of the oldest unsolved murder files in Los Angeles, and easily the city's most infamous. So, that's five of the darkest unsolved murders in history. Thanks for watching, and see you next week for another video, five most haunted hospitals in the world.